¿Funciona esto, so, Carlos? ¿Funciona? Welcome ver, everybody and good afternoon. Um, today we're having a bit of a special seminar because we're going to have three presentations by three speakers from the last team at EBD. Our first speaker will be Ricardo Diaz Delgado, followed by Diego Garcia, and we'll end with the presentation of Pedro Gomez. And we'll do the discussion at the end of the three presentations. And I believe we, you'll all introduce yourself a little bit when you start. So without further ado, the floor is yours. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Leticia. Uh, yeah, I want to thank uh, the conveners from, from the EBD seminars. Uh, I was invited formally by the former convener, which was, which, who was Christoph, last year. And we were deciding what to talk about, because as you know, we are presented as the EB, uh, last team. But actually, it's, it means more than only the laboratory that many of you no, and actually I want to say that this is not going to be a talk about the laboratory, although I will show some pictures, but uh, because the laboratory has its own uh, workshops and seminars periodically, so you can attend and I recommend you to go and have a look on, on what we do. Uh, actually, we, uh, what I propose to do is to take the chance to introduce, uh, to offer a uh, 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 workers here in the, at the EBD team, researchers Diego and, and Pedro, who are uh, dealing with two uh, of the projects we are uh, uh, developing in, in, uh, with the help of the LAST and also from the ICT, ICTS, you will see later, which are uh, Elter Plus and, and Sunhal project that is more well known in the, in the, at the EBD. Uh, I was formally, uh, uh, this is the outline of the talk, so we will see a little bit about the, the laboratory itself, about the staff services, some figures, and, and our own research lines, which is also uh, we w what we are going to focus today. Um, and the, I also want to show you the equipment about the UAVs, drones, okay, because mo most of you are also interested in. But we will then go to focus to what is the main aim of the talk today, which is about remote sensing in Doñana. That was a very ambitious talk. Uh, title uh, in, on behalf of or, or on a, a, assisting to the long-term ecological research. And we will see some uh, of the works we've been doing for, for the long-term uh, long monitoring uh, program uh, at Landscape Scale in Doñana, and then we will move to the origin of this funding we have got now, the ELTER Plus, which is on supporting the implementation of, of the ELTER research infrastructure in, uh, in uh, Europe, uh, uh, and, and then Doñana is part of it. And then uh, finally, I will link it to the, what we propose, which is uh, in relation to what we call calibration validation activities for remote sensing products. Uh, we will see some examples and, and the link with the Sunhal project or involvement in the, uh, specifically in the World Package 6. Uh, so then I will give pass to, to Diego and the floor to Diego and, and then uh, Pedro. Well, this is the last. I mean, I, I wanted to have a, a nice picture of all of us, but the, this is the only one I, I got <laughs> during the COVID. Uh, but it's still, there is Pedro, uh, well, you know all of them, Javier, Isa, David, uh, Diego, myself, and, and then it's Pedro, and then two, two recent uh, uh, recruitments we have uh, from the funding from the ministry. So we have, as you know, uh, a classroom where you can, uh, we, we organize our own cor teaching courses or lectures, but also you can also organize your own. Uh, we have some uh, interesting equipment, uh, such as plotter, that has been largely used by all of you, but also we recently acquired a 3D printer, which is interesting, and a laser scanner, well, sorry, a scanner that helps you to retrieve the 3D models for any object you want to do. So if you are interested, you are very welcome to come. Uh, we have uh, uh, an other, uh, uh, let's say, offices, and uh, we are 
uh, a nice team, uh, not only because we are kind, <laughs> but also because I, uh, we, we only, we, maybe you think about remote sensing only working in, f in front of uh, um, uh, 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 your screen, but we go to the field and do a lot of in situ uh, work. Uh, so we are keen on using GPS or spectral radiometers or even sampling. Uh, so uh, this is, these are more or less the, uh, mis I mean, uh, let's say the, the functions we cover or the services we offer, such as sampling design, search, download, and processing of data that you may be interested in, assisting you in that data harvesting uh, from mainly remote sensing sources, but also, you know, spatial uh, layers, or, and obviously assisting you in, in processing and analyzing the data, including cloud computing. Uh, publication, not only publication such as papers, but also uh, what we call uh, uh, web map services. So publishing your, your spatial data, training, dissemination, and our own research projects, which is what it's really about today. Some figures I will show you. Uh, this is the, the whole period or, uh, that the last has been working uh, since 2003. You see we have plenty of users, more than a thousand, and uh, these are the figures that, uh, uh, let's say, demonstrate uh, the usability of LAST. But what is, what is also interesting is that we offer 29 services, official services by CESIC, uh, providing assessment, staff, equipment. Another achievement I, we are happy to have is that we reach some quality standards, such as the one processing uh, dealing with the processing of the Landsat time series of images. Maybe you know, uh, this is a Earth observation mission, one of the oldest ones since the 70s, uh, especially for Doñana to retrieve automatically different uh, products. And these products are, as I, as I told you, they are provided uh, as a web map services, so you can access these services. We, we are formal part of the spatial uh, data infrastructure in Spain and in Andalusia and these services are also accessible through your desktop uh, software for instance so you can download or you can even uh, process them using uh, for, uh, such as the inundation the flooding or inundation of the Doñana marshes or turbidity and uh, uh, any other thing these are our research lines use uh, basically using not only satellite images but uh, starting from the the wider perspective using satellite images to, for instance, reconstruct the, the flooding maps or the inundation maps of the Doñana marshes in the last uh, 30, 30 to 35 years, and then composing, for instance, the hydro period, which is a very interesting ecological parameter that has been widely used in, in, re in relation with many other uh, variables for conservation in Doñana um, or other uh, water uh, parameters about water quality such as turbidity, uh, many many projects demonstrating the, the usability of this data but also uh, focusing on how to scale the information from the in-situ data that we measure uh, by sampling or by using uh, automatic sensors in the field, how to scale this data to the information provided by the, the sensors at, uh, on board of the satellites or even on, on board of the airborne images that we acquired uh, uh, during uh, campaigns, mission, missions that are planned to over, uh, overfly, for instance, Doñana, to identify and locate the, uh, the spread of alien species. And recently, in the last, let's say, six years, using also drones, I, mean, I think this is the, a word that anybody can understand, uh, or UAVs, which is the formal uh, work to be used for these systems to scale up again uh, uh, important information such as plant cover or uh, plant species uh, or uh, for instance uh, 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 forestry parameters such as height or, or canopy um, or crown uh, volume things like that or even in identifying and counting uh, uh, colonies for uh, certain species bird species and finally, using the, the, same, the data at the same time of the collection data in, in, at the in-situ level. Well, I wanted to, sh to share with you also the, uh, the, let's say, the equipment we have in, in, for this, because I, 
uh, we are claimed to do or we are uh, requested to be used uh, by several projects in the at the ABD but uh, these are these are the the uh, drones we have both uh, either multi rotor or fixed wind that uh, may be used for according to the cameras that that, uh, that can be on board uh, such as multi spectral meaning that you are collecting data not only in the visible part of the spectrum but also in the infrared or even longer infrared hyperspectral meaning that you are collecting every single nanometer across the, the, the full spectrum meaning that you have a data cube finally and that you can recover what we call the spectral signatures of the uh, for instance the vegetation or the uh, water bodies Thermal, we are also working with thermal. It's, it's a different uh, proced procedure to, to retrieve uh, valuable data, but it's also useful to, for instance, uh, identify hot spots, such as not only for brightness temperature, but also for animals. So we are dealing with that. And finally, visible, which is less, less uh, relevant. But uh, in recently, we acquired the LiDAR. I don't know if you're aware about the LiDAR, but the LiDAR is an active sensor allowing you uh, to retrieve uh, not only the topographic uh, uh, differences uh, from, from the surface you overlay, but also in the case you have, uh, for instance, canopies, you can retrieve also the, the volume of the canopies and the height of the canop canopies with very high precision. So same for buildings. So what is the, the point? Well, as you may know, uh, remote sense is, is widely used. Anyone here, I, I, I'm afraid, is using, even if he doesn't know or she doesn't know, uh, remote sensing images in, in your day to day. Uh, it's, it's got a, a, a plenty of pros of ab or advantages, such as the ones I, I listed here. It is global, offers, offering you multi scale vision. Uh, it, it's also interesting that you have historical uh, uh, time series of images available for any place in the world so you can easily go to your place wherever you go and then retrieve the changes in the last 30 to 40 years with a very nice resolution so you can it can allow you to have a baseline for instance for restoration pro projects or uh, anything else you may hint uh, these time series are pretty consistent meaning that you can compare one one image from the 70s to the one image nowadays which is also very, very helpful in, in for instance, in modeling uh, specific variables. And then uh, a large sample size, which is not, uh, is also important. Uh, well, I will focus only that uh, also on the point that you can retrieve what we call biophysical variables. For instance, uh, gross primary production or leaf area index variables that you can measure in situ, but also you can model to be retrieved by using images. Um, on the other hand, it's not always good things, but you also have, you know, the, the constraints. And actually, I want to focus on the validation because many of the remote sensing products you work with are not validated. And this is very sad because usually you can realize when you're using them that it's not really reflecting the real data that you are collected in situ. And why is this? Because uh, uh, there's no plan at the global scale to, to carry out such a validation for every single product. Usually the validation is carried out at local places and, and, and uh, under very controlled uh, conditions. So this is why we are focusing on that. How do you do validation? By upscaling the data you collect in situ. So this is, uh, so, and upscaling can be using uh, data that is collected by uh, both automatic sensors or, you know, by human made measurements. Uh, we have to integrate all the all the sources. This is another uh, constraint. But then, let's go through. Uh, let's go to move to the uh, real role we have been playing in the last years, also in relation to the Doñana monitoring program. We proposed in the at the beginning of the century. We proposed a monitoring program to be also carried out at landscape scale. Uh, this means that we will provide protocols to focus on habitats, ecosystems, and land cover at this scale. The methods are mainly based on, on remote and what we call proximal sensing, meaning sensors that you have in the field measuring the same thing, the same information, collecting the same information is, that is collected by the sensors on board of, of satellites or airborne. 
And, and we also use landscape ecology metrics, and we provide as an outcome uh, reports, periodical reports, or the services, map services, or, and then trends and anomalies, things like that. Um, yeah, we, we are integrated in the, in the <coughs> big program that you, most of you know, the, the uh, Natural Processes Monitoring Team, uh, which is uh, funded by both the, the EBD, but also the, the different administrations. And in the case of the landscape scale uh, program, is focusing on geobiophysical uh, processes, such as, uh, you know, shoreline dynamics in Doñana is quite active. Uh, shoreline can move, as you can see here, just in a single day, 15 meters. This is amazing, but it's happening um, as a consequence of storms, you know. Uh, and the same for the estuary with the turbidity and things like that or even the sand dune system, which is also very active, and focusing on, on ecosystems structure and function, which is going to be mentioned and explained by, by Pedro later, using, uh, for instance, instruments such as the edicovariance towers, measuring the fluxes between the atmosphere and the vegetation. Anyway, I wanted to, to also pose the question, why, why do, do we have to use a landscape approach to monitor a specific area? Well. This is the scale where we can find, uh, we can focus on different processes that cannot be simply assessed by traditional in situ measurements. Because we integrate the information, for instance, at landscape scale, meaning uh, how can we deal with uh, uh, knowing the fragmentation of the territory and what is the meaning of the fragmentation for a specific species or a specific populations. Same for, for connectivity, as you may know. So you have to integrate this information. And this would be the scale by which uh, you can provide information at the, both the organism and population level through the community, which might be considered as a patch, if you know about the landscape ecology, and then come to what we call in, in remote sensing approaches, <coughs> land covers uh, or ecosystems. So it's definitely at, uh, an approach that needs to be used, as, as suggested by many authors, uh, at any uh, monitoring program, take into account the multi-scale approach using landscape uh, scale approach. Well, to, to place you a little bit in the, I'm sorry, but because I'm, I'm being very late, I will, uh, I will take uh, these ones uh, faster. We became integrated in the uh, LTR network, I don't know if you're aware about the LTR network, the long-term ecological research. Uh, we started in 2008. We, pro we proposed uh, a network in Spain, which was not formally included in this network, and it was accepted in 2008 with 10 sites. Uh, nowadays, we have 16, 16 sites, and, and this network, at the same time, you are integrated at the regional network, which in our case is the LTR Europe. LTR Europe nowadays is uh, uh, supporting uh, the creation of what we call a research infrastructure. I hope you have heard about the research infrastructures in Europe, but there is a forum, specific forum to promote the, the construction and implementation of uh, research infrastructures in, in Europe, dealing with different topics across uh, all the, the, the sciences. Uh, and this is the number of countries that, ha that are included. Uh, the, the main uh, feature of this uh, ELTER research infrastructure is that this is um, addressing uh, the main research challenges nowadays in relation to global change and biodiversity loss using what they call the whole system approach. So uh, tackling every single uh, area or let's say stratum of the uh, different uh, perspectives uh, that you can measure uh, information in relation to these challenges such as atmosphere, biosphere, uh, hydrosphere, geosphere and, uh, and mainly uh, and also including the socio-ecological perspective. Anyway, uh, an, an infrastructure actually what should be doing is to provide uh, services to the final users and actually the main final users would be the uh, scientists and also the European Commission and the, and and the general public. 
these services uh, have been defined and, and will be uh, uh, having a distribution of the infrastructure because it will be a, a distributed infrastructure and uh, with central services and, and, and topic centers. This is the, the process. Uh, we are now in the phase of preparation and, the, and, and we will be implementing this uh, infrastructure at national level uh, by, by the end of this century this uh, decade, sorry. Uh, so we, together with this, we have two funding uh, proto uh, met, uh, projects, such as the PPP and the PLUS, and the PLUS is the one that we will deal about. The PLUS is, uh, is a Horizon 2020 funded project, although it's a little bit complicated because you have 23 countries involved with uh, uh, this funding you can see he there and uh, with uh, six years of, uh, uh, of uh, time to, to, to be developed. But uh, the main uh, things I wanted to uh, stress is that uh, we are involved mainly in the uh, work packages three and four, uh, which are dealing with the definition of the standard observation variables, meaning that we choose all together the variables that are interested to be monitored for the whole, uh, uh, let's say, for long term, and uh, consistently across all the sites. And work package four is dealing with using remote sensing or earth, or earth observation information uh, to uh, provide uh, services from for for these variables to all the sites. I, I just wanted to take the chance also to to tell that uh, there is uh, under. One of the work packages, there is what they call transnational access, meaning that you can apply for uh, states uh, outside, or abroad, let's say, in any of the countries uh, and the sites that are included in the Elter Plus that you can see there. So it's open now. There is an open call to apply if you are interested until uh, 31st January. Anyway, let's move because we are, um, sorry for that. Uh, well, the main point, the main role, or main role in this uh, project is under the work package four. Diego will talk uh, about a little uh, about that. Um, and then uh, we are we have already decided what, or we are in the in the process to decide uh, what which ones are going to be the selected standard observation variables. As I as I told you, the ones that are being measured by every site under these uh, two work packages using a multi-scale approach. Doniana is uh, considered not only as a single site, but uh, what we call a platform, meaning that we have multi-site. As you know, we have several ecosystems in Doniana, so it's quite uh, important uh, in terms of offering different variables from different uh, ecosystems, such as wetlands or terrestrial ecosystems. Um, we have uh, the proximal sensing, we call meaning that sensors that are in the, in the field measuring exactly the same as the, as the sensors on board of the satellites, such as the uh, uh, hyperspectral sensors or thermal sensors, or the ones uh, that Diego is, go are go is going to talk later, the phenocams for phenology, uh, together with the ECTS. Uh, and we are uh, uh, very happy to, to, to use uh, Doniana because Doniana, uh, as you know, it's a protected area, but it's also meaning that it's protecting your equipment <laughs> because it's uh, more difficult to be stolen. So you can set up there your installations. Um, the, we have research facilities, as you know, so we can overnight there. We have labs, we have staff. But for, uh, from the remote sensing point of view, it's a flat topography, meaning you don't have any overcast uh, effects on the images. We have a very low cloud cover, which is very uh, helpful for optical images. We have contrasted radiometric signatures, such as the ones from sand dunes to, to, the, to the lagoons. And we have, as I told you, uh, different ecosystems. And what is important for us is that nowadays it's a very uh, uh, relevant uh, interest by uh, different agencies uh, 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 responsible for, for air observation images. Uh, opening calls for uh, establishing and setting up the protocols for calibration and validation of the products from remote sensing. So it's, we are now going through this uh, 
this opportunity. We have some uh, experiences on uh, uh, doing some upscaling for variables in relation to wetlands, uh, trying to be applied for ecological integrity uh, using data from in situ, uh, drone base and, and satellite, uh, not only for, for the wetlands, but also assessing about the, the drought effects uh, after uh, such disturbances, vegetation phenology, which is going to be uh, mentioned by or uh, explained by, by Diego, and then finally water and energy flashes that Pedro is going to be introducing. And finally, and this is my last uh, uh, slide, sorry for that, um, uh, there's uh, the, another initiative that we have become involved is the uh, SUMHAL, that many researchers at the EBD are in, uh, also involved. Um, which is linked to this another infrastructure called uh, LiveWatch, which is formally established, established in Sevilla, uh, at least one of the topic centers. Uh, and and this, uh, pro, uh, this project has been funded by the regional funding, in which I propose one work package, uh, the work package six, which is act, uh, actually looking at uh, the possibility of uh, 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 carried out a kind of uh, a, a piloting study of what we call collocation. Collocation uh, is a mandate by uh, the European Commission by which if we are having plenty of infrastructures dealing with the similar topics, we have to uh, save funding to locate the, 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 the equipment and, to, um, and for the staff to, to be uh, put in the, in the correct way, uh, such as, for instance, you can see here, this is a, a, a chart where you can see more or less the uh, area which uh, every single uh, infrastructure will be covering from, from the taxonomy to ecosystem function. And then uh, you can see that, for instance, Elter and LifeWatch are overlying, and there are others very important, such as ICOS. So we, we have to, to uh, identify which are the common points for every single uh, area that is going to be included in these uh, different uh, infrastructures in order to save funding. The specific purposes uh, are, as I told you, to, 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 uh, to demonstrate the possibility to link these two uh, infrastructures together with the same purpose, such as, uh, as I told you, upscaling, you will see later, uh, to finally offer a, a, a workflow for collocation of every uh, single uh, site dealing with two infrastructures, such as the case of Doñana. And, and using also the, the, what they call the virtual research environments, uh, like Watch, and the data lab uh, by, by, by Elter, we are aiming to, to provide the data using the standard, uh, standard, uh, standards uh, suggested by, by the EOSC. Anyway, uh, so now I give the floor to, to Diego. Ricardo wanted to share the seminar with us, but I think he, <laughs> he, he will need uh, two or three seminars just for, just for him. <laughs> so. Okay, so this is my presentation. I'm going to talk about uh, Elter Plus. Well, Ricardo has told a lot, so I, I'm going to avoid that. Um, the word package four, and my task is the 4.4. And then I will show the Feno app is the app that uh, I am, we are developing in this, in this packet. So first of all, I, I would like to, uh, to apologize myself. I have been forced against my will to do this in English. So I'm not very confident, but I, I try to do my best. So sorry, Andy. <laughs> OK, so I have a, I have a slide to, to introduce myself uh, for the one of you who doesn't know me. I'm a geographer linked to the uh, Doñana Biological Station and Remote Sensing G GIS uh, Lab since 2014. I'm a uh, Geographical Information System and Remote Sensing Technician. So I, I'm just a technician. I'm not, I'm not a researcher or not a postdoc, uh, not even a predoc. 
as my work mate, so please have some, some mercy judging in my presentation. Uh, if I have to, to say, to describe uh, what I do here in the, in the remote sensing and GIS lab, I would say just in one sentence is that I, I apply Python to, to process the satellite data, to automat automatize uh, processing tasks in, with satellite data. Uh, mainly regarding flooding, uh, and the water mass, water depth, uh, also water turbidity, hydro period. And now in the Elter project, I'm, I'm more related with uh, vegetation healthy and phenology. I also like, uh, I, I also like the coastal geomorphology. I, I'm not doing anything about that here, but this is a presentation about myself. So I, I like to apply also satellite data to coastal geomorphology. I, I hope maybe someday I can help Ricardo with, with this here. I, I like to put this, this picture uh, because this, this belonged to 15 years ago. I, I was my, my first contact with, uh, with Doñana. I, I was working a couple of years in Doñana natu Natural Space uh, in the water management plant and doing some also, also flooding maps. Uh, we use the, this linemetrical these linimetrical scales uh, that are reported uh, through the marshes uh, with this data from with this, the, the water depth in the scale and the digital terrain model with this map. Uh, I also started, uh, started there to, to play with Landsat, uh, with Landsat data. Uh, then I, uh, I learned a lot here in, in Doñana with Javier and Ricardo uh, and the other, the other member of the, of the last. Um, so I, I like to put that because this come from two different. This figure comes from two different methodology. One, this uh, I apply this in the Doñana Natural Space. I apply this in in the in the last EBD. Uh, in the a couple of years ago with Javier Bustamante, we we did a methodology that uh, mix the two the two process together. Uh, so we get the. We get the float maps from the satellite data, but we polygonize and we cross with the M M digital terrain model, so we can do a more accurate, uh, more accurate uh, flooding flooding maps. So it's like uh, everything comes together after uh, some years. Okay, so Elter Plus, uh, this is my task 4.4. Uh, as Ricardo said, we are in tandem with. Uh, Work Packet 3, where they have defined the ELTER standard observation. Uh, and well, so with this standard observation variable, as they, they are defining this document. Um, so what we do is we provide the observation data products for the wrapping, harvesting, and user of stakes. And we, we provide the validation and at the scaling using in, using in situ data. This is our, the, the goal for our work package. And from all the standard observation variables, we are working with four, actually just three. That's phenology, land surface temperature, uh, water bodies, and uh, landscape metric. Uh, Ricardo has been talking about the landscape metric, but uh, at the moment, uh, we are only working with the, the first three, phenology, land surface temperature, and, and water bodies. The site selection, the site selection it's, uh, has been difficult, uh, had some difficult. I put this figure. I think you cannot see. Uh, sorry, you cannot see it very, very good. But there's a lot of pro uh, problem with the boundaries of the site. This would be a, a good fight, and well, we have to decide not only which site has data, uh, but also which site has a good boundaries to apply the, <coughs> to apply the our studies. So we. Um, uh, we okay. So next thing I I, I have to say is that the sorry I, I didn't remember the uh, personal uh, personal personal investigate in the PIs yeah, yeah, per, personal investigation in the of this site uh, will be uh, will be consulted I'll consult it and uh, we take the the, the feedback. And in relation with that, I, I wanted to say it's there that uh, in a couple of weeks there will be a so, so, uh, Elter software workshop in Lyon, 
and we will be there and showing and teaching about our application to the to the personnel of the of the site. And this will be online in case that some of you want to want to watch it. Okay, this is relating the training. And yeah, I, Ricardo mentioned the service, the product service. So we are not also in relation with the Word Package 3, but also with the Word Package 11. That is the one that it's putting the product that we are developing and offering like service. Uh, well, last one is the thing I have said before that uh, yeah, we will also involve in the training process. This is uh, the Word Package 5. So we are rela in relation with this three package. So, Jelter map. Uh, I told before about Feno app, and now I'm talking about Jelter map because Jelter map is is Jelter map is the is it a bigger thing actually. Feno app is just one this button, and we have at the moment three button, and eventually there will be a four button for landscape metrics when we start to working with that. But what is it? What is at the end, it will be a Python packet that you could uh, download and install from your computer, uh, no matter no no matter where. Uh, at the moment, this is a this is Python code, but it's, it's still not a Python packet. It it will be soon, but this could be applied in any Python environment. For example, here in in Doniana, we have the uh, uh, Jupyter Lab uh, service that where you could uh, run this. Uh, I hope that we will do soon. Okay, I'm going to talk, I'm going to center my my talk about phenology and, and phenoat. That is the is, you, here you can see the state of the of this tool. Phenoat is already almost finished. Land surface temperature is is starting, but it's waiting that uh, I have to end with the water detection uh, in next week or in a couple of weeks. So and then I I will try to finish the land surface temperature. Okay. So what's behind that? So behind that is Google Earth Engine and GMAP. Google Earth Engine, for the one of you who, who doesn't know it, it's, uh, it was a chain of paradigm uh, some years ago. It's like a, a cloud computing to visualize and process your spatial data. But the best thing about that is that you have a lot of satellite and sensor, not all, but almost all the satellite data, you, you can uh, get it directly from there. So you don't have to download the data. You can just program against the server of Google Earth Engine, and you could just get your result. Uh, not even you, you, you don't need you don't even need to download your result. You can just display your result in the in your application. So this is very very a very nice thing and a lot of time saving saving application. GMAT is a Python package. It's uh, based in the in the Python API the, for Google Earth Engine. That uh, and adds a leaflet math application. Uh, this allows to apply power of Python data, the, the Python library to analyze the data with the Google Engine data set and show that in the in the math, this math interface that you that you saw before. Also with leaflet is the tool uh, that allows you to create this button and your, your own tools to to work with your data. So phenology, this is uh, the slide that I, I always use. So we have here, we have this, this layer. This will be the NDVI or any other vegetation index uh, during the time. Uh, at the end, for example, this is a graphic with the, all the lanes at data from um, 1984 till present. So you, his, you can see the blue dots and, and blue line. This is the real data uh, getting from the, from the pixel of the satellite. And then you have to perform a, 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 smooth, a smooth curve. And then with this smooth curve, this could be, this could be the just one, one, one season. And you have to get the, you have to get the, or, or we are getting, you, you can get a lot of parameters from here. But we are, we are working with the start of season maximum of season and the end of season. So it's the, the start of the green up period, the, the maximum value and the, and the senescent. Sen. Okay. Uh, just to say that satellite data, all these all this layers that you are watching this are just, are just data. 
So this is a, uh, just an array with uh, a y and x columns and some values. It doesn't matter if value are a vegetation index or surface reflex stand or chlorophyll or whatever. You only have data there where <coughs> you can apply and, and play with this with this data. Who, whoever you want. Okay, about the data set. What data sets are, are we using in, the, in our application? So we, are, we, are the, we use three data sets. We use the two with Sentinel-2 data. We start to do this with Sentinel-2 Sentinel data. Uh, I, I have to share well, how, can I, how can I perform this process? Uh, how can I perform this, this process uh, for our application? It was hard, and at the end, I, I find this, this Python package called Phenopy that allows you to think. You, get, uh, you can put all your observation during the time, and he's going to, he's going to, res, uh, to resume this in, in, in just one, one season, and you can put all the, 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 all the data for one season, and you are going to get the same. You are going to get the, the phenometric that you are looking for. Okay. So the, uh, we made this with Sentinel-2, so uh, we start, the start date is uh, 2017, uh, spatial resolution 10 meters, and we are working with the NDVI vegetation index, but we could apply, uh, you can apply any other index if you want. Uh, one lack of the, of the phenopy is that you, you can only work with one, one growing cycle, but uh, for, the, for the vegetation that we are tracking, it's, it's, uh, it's okay, it's enough. So the sort will be Phenopy, but with Sentinel-2 data. After that, uh, yeah, I don't know, maybe one or two more later that we, we could uh, deal with Phenopy and, and get our product, uh, the Copernicus program from the, from the ISA, the, uh, released this product, the High Resolution Vegetation uh, Phenology and Productivity. So they do the same that we, we did, but I would say that better, or at least for the, for the, for the, whole, for the whole Europe. So, uh, so now we have the old products, and the, but it's better because we want to do the validation so we can, we can close this, this product between, between this. So now we, we use Sentinel-2 data with Phenopy, or product. Uh, this product called the BPP is the, the same start date with Sentinel-2 data and surface reflex tank. 2017, then 10 meter. They use another, other uh, different index called PPI, and they can track and until to growing, growing cycle. Uh, the sort is Copernicus Wikeo. It's uh, I would like to say that it's it's quite hard to download data from Wikeo. I don't know if, some, if any of you know Wikeo. It's a it's a website, a web platform where you can. There's a lot of data set, but you have to download. You have to download to local and you have to process local. Uh, we have developed a, a script to get all the products auto automatically from there. So in case of any of you someday need some products offered by Wikeo, you can ask, ask for us because we, we could give you the script and it's very easy and, and fast to get the, the data. And the last product that we use in Fenoad is the, the MODIS. Uh, this product is with uh, phenology phenometrics. Uh, this is starting in 2000, 2001, uh, but the spatial resolution is very coarse. It's 500 meters, but you have the whole the whole globe. The vegetation index uh, used here is the EBI, and uh, also tracks uh, to two growing two growing cycle. Okay, so this will be the, the interface of the, of the ad. When, once that you open this green button, this is what you see. Here you can, you can choose the alter site that you want, to, you want to see. Here you will apply the collection, Sentinel, Sentinel Phenopy, Sentinel BPP, or MODIS. You choose the year, you choose the metric that you want to show. Also, you can choose between the day of the year. Uh, for example, this would be day of the year in, in Doñana. You will be the, the start of the, the start of the season, the maximum of the season, and end of the season for one cycle. But you could also get the value of the vegetation index, where where this where this uh, point of inflection of the curve would would reach it. <coughs> okay, and this will be the this will be the 
the scan that we use. So we get the, from, from Google and Engine, we get the Sentinel-2 Sentinel surface reference and data on also the modest product. And the other start point is the Copernicus or the Wekeo. The Sentinel-2 data from Google and Engine, we apply NDVA to GIF. NDVA to GIF, we do is like, uh, we can call it a best pixel available data. So we, we use a window from two weeks that is that correspond with three sentinel sentinel two image and we get the maximum NDVA in this period so we are avoiding the clouds or the clouds or the or the shadows of these clouds in the in the image then we apply phenop uh, to get the phenometric and here we are in the level with the with the products with the phenometric with the raster with the phenometric and then through GMAT and IP lead we have developed the application and we show in, in what we call Feno app. You can also you can also download the download any of the band or the force band here. And you can also consult the value of the in, in the in the map. Okay, so I'm not sure if I could connect with the with the data lab, so I put a I put a video. I don't know how can I <laughs> How can I see the <laughs> the video? <coughs> okay, so I'm going to the Sí, pero no sé si puedo. No me deja. Sí, sí, pero el Ah, bueno, me voy un poquito para el final. So, this will be the app sh showing a, selecting an alter site. This, for example, is running in Google Colab. So, you could, you could run it in any Python environment. So, this is Doñana, choosing the, choosing the date. Okay, it's going to end now. Just showing this is what I say that you can you can choose between the date, uh, day of the year, and and the vegetation index value. Okay, and you could download the data or consult the data. Okay. Um. Okay. Okay, we have. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. Okay, we have that. We need that. So. Oh, well. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, this was a, a Google presentation and the, the YouTube video runs in, in within the Cambia la vista aplicar presentación. Okay, so I I'm I'm finished now. So last but not least, yeah, uh, the the application has uh, two main interfaces. The, the first one you already seen it is the the math view, um, but this this other view that is the a, a form. So where you can upload your data directly from here, you could uh, you could fill this you, you could fill this with your name, your email, the land cover type that you are uploading data, your alter site. <laughs> And you can you can feel this about the start of the season, maximum of the season, and this phenometric. You could put the, the value, which is the observation, and you could save, and you could send the data with a comment from this. We will 
will arrive to, to Ricardo and I Emil. As you can also upload, uh, upload an Excel with the data. The, uh, we will use this eventually in the future for the body later. I also put these two icons. I don't know if you recognize. This is QGIS and this is QFIL because I'm not, not finished, but I have to finish this uh, in, in the next week. I, I, this is QFIL. QFIL is like a song, like a art path to get data from the, from the field. So I'm doing a, um, we are doing, sorry, we are doing a, a Google application so people can also upload the data directly from the, from the country with, the, with their phones with this uh, Google application. This could be very nice. And the other thing that we use for validation, um, oh, sorry, the other thing we use for validation is uh, the Phenocans. Uh, I have to end now, but uh, we have eight Phenocan in Doñana. This is one, one of the reasons we are working with, uh, with Doñana and one of the, of the, for the, for the validation process. There's only, there's only 20 sites in the ELTER, uh, of the 500 ELTER sites, only 20 that have Phenocan and we are focusing in this site to do the validation because with these cans, you can, yeah, it's, it's very small, but you can see this is just like a, a regular camera. Some of them have a, a near infrared channel, so allows you to, to perform the vegetation index. But uh, also without this uh, infrared channel, you could also do another vegetation index very similar who correspond very good with the, with the NDVI. So what do they say? This is a camera permanently uh, getting data from, the, from an area that we are, um, and at the end of the season, you have this, this, uh, this curve. It's very similar with, with, with the satellite <coughs> data, which is in the, in the growth level. Uh, this allows you to get this, this graph with this data from the, from the Phenocan, the Phenocan site, and then we do this kind of study for the, for the validation. So I think this is all. Well, uh, just to end, say that's a good news. Yesterday, uh, yesterday I write this. Uh, we present FENOAT in the in the Remote Sensing Spanish Association Congress, past summer in in Pamplona, and FENOAT was selected to to do like in the in their journal like a what they call practical case. So uh, just yesterday I write this. So we are happy for that. Okay. Um Pedro's coming now. Hello, I'm, I'm going to try to be fast, you know, like my, <laughs> my partner. Uh, my name is Pedro Gomez Giraldez, I'm a postdoctoral researcher here in Doñana Biological Station, and I'm working in the Sunhar project. Sunhar project, um, I think everybody here knows it, uh, is the fundamental objective is the conservation of biodiversity, natural or semi-natural system of the Western Mediterranean, based on high-tech infrastructure, and the association between highly specialized research personnel and citizens. My work in the in the in the Sunhar project, the specific work, is the systematic is, is the subtag 6.2, that is the objective is the systematic acquisition and automatic processing of water and carbon <laughs> fluxes by the vegetation, wetland, and soil of Doñana using flux towers and use of this data obtained in the field for the validation of products derived from remote sensing images. We are working in Doñana. I'm not, not going to say how important is the part um, and that, but only to say that we are focusing in, we are focused in the in to know the role of the carbon and water cycle uh, in the different ecosystem in, of, of the park. Then we are studying the carbon, water, and energy balance. The three balance that are so related between each other. 
and we are studying these balances on a different scale from plot scales, like measuring with instrument or doing field work, to regular scale or with satellite or the mid scale with airborne or drones. And, the, and working with that scale allows us to, to develop models at the regional scale and later validate it in the, in the down scales. And the final scale is the, for validation is the Edicovariance Tower that ICTS have four of them in, in the Doñana Biological Reserve, one in one control that is in, in dry SRAPs, uh, Montenegro is in wet SRAPs, uh, Corte in, in Juniper Woodlands, and Fuente Duque in marshes. But what is uh, the covariance tower? But the covariance tower is a, is a system, a group of instruments that can measure all the components in the in an energy balance. The energy balance is the, the conservation of energy in an ecosystem. That, that means that the, the inputs must be the same as the outputs. Then in an ecosystem, you have the net radiation, that is the, the solar radiation that enters in the system, that minus the G, that is the soil heat flux, that is the energy that is, is lost in the, in the soil, and that must be the same as the, the sum of latent heat flux and sensible heat flux. The latent heat flux is the energy that promotes the change of state in a, in a body, that means the uh, change from liquid to gas, for example, and this the, um, in this case is the bubble transpiration. And the sensi sensible heat flux is the, is the energy that changes the temperature in the bodies, but without the change of state. It's so related with the temperature. The left part of the equation is so easy to measure. You can measure directly with, with uh, four component radiometer, for example, and the soil heat flux with, with um, heat, soil heat, heat plates. And the difficult part is the right part of the, of the equation that you have to measure with the real decovariant system that is a 3D anemometer and uh, a light or a gas analyzer that you can measure the concentration of water and, and carbon. And why this? Because you have the con this basic of the I sorry. This is based in the covariance methodology. What is the covariance? Covariance is the is more or less the quantity of variation of two of two variables together. It's a difficult proced mathematical procedure. I'm not going to to deepen in, in that. But finally, the, the thing is, if you have the the vertical in two close moments, the vertical wind speed and the concentration of a variable. In that two moments, you have the, the vertical flux of that, of that variable. In this case, the, the instruments are, are measuring the 10 time high frequency measurement, like the 10 times per second, the, the eddies that come from, from the wind, and in, in every moment, is measuring the vertical wind speed, the temperature, and Usually, usually the, water, the water concentration and the carbon concentration. Then with the temperature, you have the sensible flux heat, sensible heat flux, and with the water, you have the, the, Latin, the, Latin, the Latin heat, and the, with the carbon, you have the, the carbon flux, the vertical carbon flux. You, then you are measuring this in the depend in, in an area that is called footprint and it depends on the, the height of the instrument of the instrument and usually is like the double of the vegetation you, you want to measure and depend the, the extension of that area depends on the wind in the, the wind speed in the moment and we are Processing this data from the form flux tower, um, sorting out another variables like air, tem air temperature, MDVI, surface radiometric temperature, etc. And we have data from 2009 in Corte, 2012 in Montenegro and Fuente Duque, and 2019 in Control. Well, 
Coming back to the, um, to the models, we are modeling a water and energy balance with remote sensing and, and CO2 assimilation. For the water and energy balance, we are using the two source energy balance model or TSEP. I'm not going to explain so much of the model, but more or less it's, um, it's based in the separation of the, of the surface radiometric temperature in two components, the soil and the cover, and the model analyzes the, all the energy balance separately in the soil and, the, and in the cover. The sensible heat flux is, is, made, is estimated with a series model resistance, the, with the presentation equation, is the transpiration um, and a lot of things, but I'm not going to, to explain here. But the thing is, the model firstly is calibrated in, at local scale with, with data from the decovariance and with field work, and later is applied at regional scale, and in our first approximation was with modest product of land surface temperature, leaf area index, and fraction of green. And apply this application gave a good result, good result that, um, root mean square error about below of 50 bats per square meter that this mean permits our or allows a daily about respiration of with an error that, um, less than one millimeter per day. The modeling of CO2 assimilation, we are doing that um, through the GPP GPP variable, that is the gross primary produ production and through a like use efficiency model. This is a model that related the, the incident solar radiation with the, with the use of this radiation by the, by the vegetation. In this case, is the equation is the product of the photosynthetic active radiation, the fraction of photosynthetic active radiation, and a parameter epsilon, that is the efficiency of the use of the light and is of the pen of the species and the own species of the species. The, the PAR is, is estimated with the radiation then from the analysis or from a pyranometer or, or radiometer. And the PAR is the first approximation was with the modest product, the FPAR. And the parameter. We, we did two approaches, one with the metro meteorological variables, that meteorological variables that affect to the assimilation of, of the carbon in the plant, that is minimum temperature and vapor pressure deficit. Another approach with a water stair index, then we use the, the result of the t model, the, the daily vapor transpiration divided by the vapor transpiration reference. And with that, with that, we we obtain an error on room mean square error of 0 0.9 in the in the case of grain per of carbon per square meter per day. Uh, in the case of meteorological variable, that is reduced to the to 0 0.7 grains with the using the water stress index because the of the best fit in this moment that is when the with water scarcity conditions. Um, Finally, to talk the some complementary measurement that we have been installed like um, three or four months ago, a uh, cosmic ray neutron sensor, that is um, an instrument that can measure the, the soil water content in a radius of 200 or 300 meters and with a depth of 50, 50 centimeters. And how, how work this, this instrument? Uh, because it's measuring the energy of the neutrons that come from the space and they in reduce the energy when interact with the, with the hydro hydrogen mol molecules and in the soil the almost every molecule of hydrogen is in the water and then establish like a relation between between the energy of the neutrons and the and the water content. And finally, only to say that in this spring we are going to do a field campaign with the with the plane that is going to take in the whole park high resolution images of thermal and hyperspectral, and we are doing a lot of measures at the at the same time, like with drones, with terrestrial with terrestrial laser, with radio radiometer, emissivity, etc. And you are welcome to make your own measurement if if you want to come with us. And that's all I think. I, Thank you.
Thank you very much. And I know we are over the, the time, but for those of, those of you that can stay, I think we can, we can still take five, ten minutes for some, some questions. So is there any question? I can, I will start. I think my question is more for, for Pedro. <laughs> I think it's more for you, but maybe not. That. I'm still uh, thinking out loud, but I was wondering with all the data that you're processing, mm -hmm. um, how could you tell the difference between what's normal variability in the system or when there's like extreme value or extreme events? Uh, it's, it's, it's normal. When there's extreme value, you, you, you see a an outlier, total outlier. For then the normal, um, it's difficult to say when is. You have to analyze a big, I don't know how to say, how to say, is the string data is, is, everything is related, you know, you know, it's possible if some, some, for example, the sensible heat flux is so high, it's normal that the latent flux is, to, is in the same relation, more or less, and then when you have Outliers, you know, you know it. I don't know if I in as well as well in you, or no? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Yeah. But this is easy to know. It's more or less in the days is during the summer or during the winter. The the behavior is more or less okay. common. Mm. Thank you. There are more questions. Irene. So thank you. I, I was asking for Diego. So if you could explain better the, um, how are you validating the Pheno app uh, with the with the Pheno cams and the satellite satellites? Well, as you know, we are still working with that, but uh, yeah. actually it could be an easy process. Is uh, Feno cans uh, works perfectly. You know that there's some issues with, with this. So, uh, it I mean that sometimes the Feno cans during the time, during the year, uh, can move, for example. So, the, the target that you are focusing is not the same because it's changed. So, in the Feno can, uh, pretend that you are taking a picture of this goal and I, try, I, I select an area, area of interest in the blackboard but if my camera moves uh, from the wind or maybe a, a bear or whatever, then so I, my, my area of interest also moves. So I'm not pointing the whole blackboard, but maybe I'm taking some of the wall or some of the door or whatever. So we are not into that uh, yet. Uh, you know, we are working <laughs> more or less, more or less with, the, with you and uh, with X-Roy tool. But uh, the, the thing is that uh, we, get, we get the, the, met the metric, we get the metric uh, from the value of the day of the year from the sa satellite and the, this, this curve that I, I show in the presentation. So we get this data. We also have this, we apply the, a similar process and we get the, this phenometric from the, from the curve of the phenocamps and yeah, just cross them. But, but always in the visible, no? Or sorry? Using visible the the from the satellite, no? You are using no, we the. We are also using the infrared. I mean, we are actually the last thing we are doing is to try to place uh, send Italy the image that is taken in an oblique way from the phenocam in order to compare properly the image that is captured by the sensor, and we are using both together the the, the near infrared and the and the visible to compose the the vegetation index to be able to compare both. And this is something we are doing by placing the ground control points you observe when we do were there uh, for the for the obliquus acquisition by by Fenocan. But so far we are just testing the procedure because uh, it's not that easy. Uh, depending on the it depends on the height of the of the Fenocan in the place you have placed the the camera. So for instance, in the in the Palacio we have it at 30 meters, so it's like in a very wide area. Uh, and, and it's not the same as other cameras that are focusing on something that is very close. Uh, but this is the, the, the procedure we are following now, together with the uh, uh, from CNR, oh. Italy. Um, we hope to have some results uh, <coughs> very soon. Okay, I will talk to you more later. <laughs> but yeah, great, mm -hmm. thank you. Thanks. Is there one last question? No? So I think 
we can we can close to this seminar. I wanted to thank again our three speakers, Ricardo, Pedro, and Diego. And I also wanted to take this opportunity to introduce uh, Jaume to you, uh, Jaume Izquierdo. He's a postdoc that joined uh, EBD last year, if I'm not mistaken, uh, and he's also now part of our uh, EBD seminar organizing team. So you can come <coughs> to him also if you have questions. And thank you, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> thank you.